Let's stay with that story. Both the National Super Alliance and Jubilee sides have dismissed suggestions by the church leadership in Kenya for an expanded executive to accommodate the opposition. Just hours after the National Council of Churches of Kenya suggested the way out of the current political standoff, both sides have reacted, saying there is need for dialogue, but they insist there will be no talks about power sharing. Nazo Amorimi Mwangi now reports, Jubilee says there will be no dialogue before Uhuru Kenyatta is sworn in. As he received the victory certificate from the electoral body's chairman, Wafula Chebukati, President Uhuru Kenyatta seemingly knew too well that it was not yet Uhuru in his race back to State House. As to my agenda going forward, I will discuss. Once the processes are over, I am not going to jump the gun. But with a country sharply divided between Jubilee supporters celebrating Kenyatta's re-election, <laughs> opposition leader Raila Odinga's followers mourning the outcome of the repeat presidential poll, boycotted by millions of his supporters. The vocabulary of the elusive call for the Kenyatta-Odinga dialogue has resurfaced. And the National Council of Churches of Kenya has suggested an entry point to the talks. We recommend that Kenyans, through Parliament, amend the Constitution of Kenya 2010 to provide for A, an expansion of the executive to provide for the president to appoint a prime minister and two deputies. Borodinga's camp has rejected the suggested expansion of the executive or any attempts towards the formation of a coalition government, demanding that a fresh presidential election should be held in 90 days as a precondition for any such talks. NASA CEO Norman Magaya insisting the coalition will not file any presidential poll petition at the Supreme Court against Kenyatta's win, saying such a move would be tantamount to endorsing an election which the coalition insists was a sham and never ought to have been held. An argument which the Jubilee camp has dismissed as hot air, insisting any talks with the opposition should only happen after Kenyatta's swearing in for a second term. We are ready any day to engage in talks on only one subject, uh, on modalities and framework of conducting a free, fair, credible election. When Ray Odinga has an agenda that he thinks that he wants to discuss with the president, the president's always been welcoming to discuss that issue, but not to go and dialogue with Ray Odinga on whether or not he won the elections or whether or not the elections took place. But while the escalating political tension before the nullified August 8th election and the subsequent Odinga withdrawal from the repeat poll have intensified the standoff. To the president and other leaders. And Kenyan Diaspora Alliance Chair Dr. Shemo Chuodo argues that the current stalemate could be the outburst of pent-up frustrations over historical injustices and perceived marginalization of opposition allied regions. Part of why both Jubilee and the opposition are getting the kind of crowds of following they get is because of that thinking of it's our time to eat. Today, Honorable Raila Odinga, if he was a leader of the minority, he could have been like the leader of the opposition and be in the house, lead his troops and, and form a shadow uh, cabinet. The current structure of government that we have, if we have free and fair election, you will have a system where those who lose will be happy to have lost fairly and wait for another five years. Now, even as attempts at backroom talks intensify, the spotlight remains at the Supreme Court as the countdown to the Monday deadline for any likely petition continues. Muremi Mwangi, KTN News, in Nairobi.